one's a little bit tricky sometimes, <laughs> getting it down on the cord. But even stub fingers can have calluses on them, so that helps a little bit too. My name is Charlie Johnson, and I'm a public school teacher of the visual arts and media arts. I really didn't have a, a, an art teacher, even through high school. And I got into uh, college. Uh, I did a misstep. Uh, I listened to my parents and my teachers and ended up at the U.S. Naval Academy for about nine months until I'd had it, I was fed up to hear, um, taking orders without asking any questions and uh, the brainwashing didn't take on me. As soon as you said that you set them down in the bathroom, I pictured in my mind where they, they were sitting on the uh, paper roll dispenser. Good. <laughs> You can see your Crocs really well in the dark here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, flashy, that's me. A few years in the uh, making, uh, let me find the switch, there it is. Uh, I've got a few tiles here, and we class by class, we've slowly put those up. Students who come back years later and, oh, that one's mine, or that one's, oh, I didn't remember did that. And, uh, it makes it kind of, kind of fun. Now that i got a key, I'll put this box in the room, because I can. <clears throat> and then this is my room, 124, photography, digital media. All these nice stuff. I suspect, yeah. So this, this is kind of a sampling of photography work. I've done, I've taken pieces of separate images and sewed them together and then done contact prints of that. This is actually, I believe, a print of my classroom and there's one of my students standing in the middle. I don't care what you've got for a piece of equipment. If you want to take a good photo, you have to work at it. It's not something that you just point and click. If you have a film camera with a roll of film in it and you're winding the shutter ahead to advance the film to take the next picture, you need to think a little bit about what that next picture is going to be and how you're going to set it up and that sort of thing. I love the old style and I think the dark room and working in the dark room is uh, a piece of history. He just loves kids. Like he was the best dad, he's the best grandfather, and he just loves his students, every single one of them. And he has as much passion now, 50 years into it, as he did his first year of teaching. I'm Jen Johnson and I am a former educator. I'm a mental health advocate. I married a Charlie Johnson. <clears throat> That's my, uh, my oldest son with his brother. Matt and Tori. Matt and Tori, yeah. My oldest son was diagnosed with schizophrenia after he graduated from high school. Our oldest son, Matt, uh, was diagnosed with schizophrenia officially when he was 20 years old. Charlie and I have gone into high school classes so many times and um, done some education in the health classes and psychology classes and talked about Matt's story. We bring in his artwork. The symptoms are horrible. Um, you hear voices. In the beginning, he actually had visual hallucinations also. You know, we've come a long way, a long way, because it was 30 years ago that he was diagnosed. So we've been through everything and he's been through hell and back a million times but he's a survivor and he's just like his dad he texts me every morning and he'll say mom i want you to have the most wonderful day today he said i am and i know you will too and he's our role model that's that's what we say um, we are so much better people now because of him because he he's taught us so many things in about unconditional love it's not just a story of statistics and how many people have serious brain disorder. It's our son. Just joy, and, and that seems strange because he suffers horribly, but he gives us so much joy. This sketchbook journal, uh, it's about 11 by 14 inch uh, sheets, 
was the basis for my thesis for my master's degree. And it, uh, dealing with schizophrenia in a family situation and the effects of uh, that on family members. And so it was kind of a descriptive piece, but a lot of research uh, as well that went into it. While I was working on some of these, part of, part of, what, I, part of what it came of that was a, a tool, developed a tool that uh, uh, I ended up calling a gorilla brush. It's simply a, a round bristled paintbrush that I dip in Gorilla Glue. When the glue goes onto the brush, you notice these brushes are all expanded. They're not, they're not a, a held together single kind of brush, but they've expanded. And that's what, the, uh, that's what Gorilla Glue does. It spreads as it, as it uh, cures. It spreads out and bubbles up. And then I just take a little turpentine and dip the ends of the brushes and I got the fine hair. Being able to get a texture fairly quickly is kind of an important thing uh, to my way of thinking. And then finishing things off. This needs a little resolution around that, that edge on there. And then these are fine. I don't need even splattering off a little bit, hoping to get it on your camera lens there. But you know, a looming mouth, a couple of nostrils, or something like that, and all of a sudden, I've got something that almost anybody might be able to recognize as a, uh, as a face. It's, it's, it's really a simple matter to go in with a liner brush, and, and I've got some things going off there. So I see like a wound, I see like a hole in here, sort of. So I'm gonna get some, pull some things out of that as though it's, there's some move, movement in place going on there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and the figures are pretty simple. You kind of sort of see a, a shoulder or a head and a shoulder or something like that, where just a little dab and maybe lengthen an arm out and put a hand on there. I got a little too much ink on that one, but. And then legs can stretch out and a foot. For me, art is always cathartic. It, it pulls out, it kind of pulls out and has, it gives you a chance to examine your soul, I think. And the, the, the beauty of that is, and it's the interesting part of that is, I think I, my best art, the art that is most meaningful to me, uh, comes from times when things are difficult and I need to I need to vent. Uh, I think I first wooed Jen with my uh, advanced uh, skills in guitar playing when I first met her. Uh, come to her house and have a few Beatles tunes that I'd been practicing that were popular at the time maybe or that sort of thing and uh, she, she would swoon and, and, <laughs> and uh, be, on, be on the floor and uh, and so there I was standing up on the stage with a microphone in front of me and a guitar in my hand, and there you were, just, oh, my hero. Well, <laughs> that's just like my like musical just... hero. I saw a woman a video years ago, an inspirational video, woman washing dishes in the sink. And I went, what's, what's weird? Something's weird there. She was, then the, the camera pulls back and she's sitting on a stool. She's washing dishes with her feet because she doesn't have any arms. So I saw that and I said, ah, that's, this is nothing, right? This is nothing.